Bruce and Morgan all. This thing is an Achilles amp. It's from Melbourne. I picked it up secondhand a few years ago. It's a replica of a Fender amp from the late 1950s, the Low Power Twin. 5E8 for those playing along at home with the schematics. It's about 50 watts. It's a very faithful replica with old fashioned components. You can see the Tweety box and everything. Anyway, we're gonna take the back off it and have a look inside and see what makes it tick. There's the control panel from right to left. It's uh, the inputs for normal and bright channels, the normal volume, bright volume, treble bass presence. The tone circuit's very similar to the Pro, Bandmaster and Super from the mid late 50s. And in fact, it, it is pretty similar from the tone circuit to phase inverter for those circuits. The preamp's really different and the output stage is really different. We'll get to that later. Down this end, you can see we've got a power and standby switch. Um, I don't use a standby, it's always in on. We've got one fuse, that's for the um, high voltage from the wall and a plug. Uh, that would have been for you know, the ground lift switch, but conveniently you could stick a master volume in there if you were so inclined. Alright, so there it is with its pants off. Things to note first up, we've got some shielding on that backboard there. It's a nice touch. Help form a Faraday cage to help shield the guts of the circuit there when the back is on. Uh, the next thing that's of note is the Celestian Creamback 65 watt speakers. I think those are a post market change or maybe it's a custom order. Uh, from what I've seen online these amps come with Jensen's as stock. Um, this is an upgrade. Uh, for the rest you can see we've got four output valves there. Uh, the two JJ6L6s there towards the middle and two electroharmonics. 5U4GBs. Two 5U4GBs. Wow. This is drawing a shit tin of current on the rectifier. Four preamp or signal tubes there. We'll have a look at those more closely later. And you can see it's all very traditional kind of uh, construction. You know, flying heater wires going in there. Uh, orange drop caps. Uh, yeah, typical sort of fender construction, except of course it's. Uh, not using that poxy fiber board that Fender used. So that's good. Looking good so far. And now for the tubes. We've got the shields off the signal valves. The one closest to the camera is the phase inverter. It's a 12AX7. It's a cathode iron phase inverter. The same kind of thing you see in the Tweed Deluxe, the Pro, the uh, Bandmaster and the Super from that period. It's not the same as the long tail pair that you get on the basement and the big box twin. So this is a more old fashioned thing. Gets a bit of a bad rap for distorted sounds which can get fairly unruly with blocking distortion. You can get around that but in any case, that's what we've got here. It's a 12AX7. This one here is the uh, cathode follower. It's a 12AY7 in this case. Again, this is what's driving the tone circuit. And that's common to all the other 6L6 amps I just mentioned. And now we have two 12AY7s. These are the preamps for the normal and bright channels respectively. Now remember, each of these is a twin triode. So that means we've got one triode for each input. That's unique to this amp in the Fender lineup. So there you go. Looking at the output tubes, you can see closest to the camera, we've got a pair of 6L6 GCs. Those are from JJ, so that's you know the late 50s version of the 6L6. In the dark ages, this amp would have come with 5881s, which is a slightly lower power version. Um, these will be just fine. Next to that, you can see these two 5U4 GBs. Each of these draws about 3 amps, which gives you an idea of how hard the power transformer is working in this thing. I do not know why Fender implemented this rectifier circuit in this amp. Uh, they didn't do it anywhere else. They didn't do it again. And I don't blame them. 6 amps, my god. So we're inside the chassis now, looking at the underside of the control panel, the inputs. 
some nice touches there they've used star washers on all the inputs and I think all the pots as well so it should make for good solid chassis connections for the grounds and they've used little earth tags there too to help with the, uh, the earthing from the circuit board you can see carbon comp resistors in there presumably there's a modern one so higher tolerance than the nasty old ones but still you know it's traditional so that's what you're paying for if you want traditional Achilles branded caps they look like F&T's all very neat work looking at the guts in slightly more detail these orange drop capacitors are a mix of 715 and 716p's so they're all polypropylene uh, the 716's for reasons unknown are rated to only 400 volts of which I am not a fan Mesa reckons it's alright so what could possibly go wrong yeah and check out this wiring on the primary the active goes to the tip of the fuse good nasty soldering and from there to the power transformer primary and check out the neutral to the power switch what the actual fuck okay so I'm back in the guts of this Achilles low power twin we fixed up the primary wiring on the power transformer so the active goes to the tip of the fuse as it did before now the ring goes to the switch as it was meant to and then from there to the power transformer the neutral is now hardwired to the power transformer as the Lord intended Amen the cabinet work on this amplifier is really excellent uh, I can't see the joints in the cabinet so the finger joints or dovetails can't tell which that's a good thing it's all lacquered inside so it's not going to change moisture content and warp the tweed has been very well applied all the edges are tidy and aligned uh, there's no lumpy bits that are going to end up fraying early uh, it's all well lacquered it's a really really nicely made cabinet which makes me a little bit pissy about this here there should be a cup washer in there to protect that beautiful tweed from this wood screw which is going to end up cutting it just a minor thing but it would make this amp last just that much longer and it's a lovely piece of cabinetry so why not go the extra few cents eh so there she is back in her lair bullying that poor little AC15 next to her it's a, a very nice amp all in all it's really well built and it's got some good components in there too um, there's not a lot to complain about it's a very traditional uh, close copy of the 5E8A uh, it might say an exact copy so you know if that's what you want this is it warts and all so it's got cloth covered wire uh, which is really nice uh, easy to work with it looks good and of course it'll absorb moisture and it'll stop being an insulator sooner or later but you know that's what it's for it's traditional carbon comp resistors again they look great they look traditional they'll drift too bad so sad that's what you're paying for um, so going away from the traditional aspects of it which are what they are and make it sound the way it does things I would have liked to have seen on here um, adjustable fixed bias as I said a second ago it's followed the 5e8 circuit exactly which just gives you fixed bias it would have been nice to have an adjustable fixed bias in there because it's not 1957 anymore um, we need to be able to adjust that I would have preferred to see 600 volt capacitors uh, film capacitors throughout I don't know why they used 400s I wouldn't have done that if I were they um, and also just a niggling thing cup washers on the screws on the back but other than that it's um, there's really not a lot to complain about on the quality side it's actually really well done and um, you know, steering clear of the traditional they've used a meaty handle on top instead of that poxy little thin leather strap that Fender used to use thumbs up good choice they fixed that um, on the what the fuck side I do not know what they were thinking when they wired up the primary of the power transformer um, that was just wrong if you reverse the neutral and the active it'd still be wrong there's just no way to have that correct the way it was done 
pure fuck up. What were you thinking? Still on that subject, the Earth lead is not the longest of the three leads coming out of that uh, power lead. It should be the longest, and it should be uh, bonded to the chassis independent of any other connection. That's not the case here. They've used a chassis bolt, and there's another Earth going to that point. This is not to code. Um, yeah, so I think they need to lift their game. Big league. This is just not good enough in that respect. It's not legal. So uh, for a major commercial outfit to be wiring up the primary side of a power transformer this way, outrageous. But fix that, and it's a superbly built hat, which makes the other stuff incomprehensible. Why would you do it?